Hey everyone, it's Matt Williams, Mr. MPW. Welcome to today's video. So today we're going to take a look at um, effect, essentially effects of controls is what we call it. So we're going to look before we start diving into explaining and going through the whole private pilot's license syllabus, we're going to look at what the controls are, how they work, and then we'll get airborne um, and show you physically how those work in the air. So without further ado, let's dive on into explain and take a look. Okay, so here we are, the, um, the kind of standard X-Plane Cessna 172. Um, turned all the graphics options down because that isn't what we're, uh, we're looking at doing this for. We've got the aircraft shut down at the moment so that we can just quietly have a look at what the different controls do. So, first of all, if um, we take a look inside the cockpit, um, I'm going to show you the control yoke. And the control yoke, if we move the controls over to the left, the yoke goes to the left, to the right, it goes to the right. If we push it all the way forward, um, that changes the elevator, we'll look at that in a second, and likewise if we pull it back towards us, we can see that happening as well. We've got the rudder pedals down in the bottom in the footwell here, and which hopefully you can see highlighted, and if I push the right rudder pedal, the right pedal moves, the left pedal, that left pedal moves. And that is effectively the controls that we are going to look at. There is one other control as well, um, which is the throttle and that's the throttle in and out. Like I say, we'll look at all these in the air um, and we'll dive outside now and take a look at what happens on the outside of the aeroplane when we move those controls around. So, um, first of all, we're going to look at the elevator. Now, the elevator is here on the tail. Um, it's this large kind of control surface at the back. And if we move that control column forwards, the elevator goes down. And if we pull it back towards us, the elevator goes up. Essentially, if we wanted to pull the nose of the aircraft up, we'd pull back on the control column, and this is what the elevator would do. Um, that would be quite a significant nose up or pitch up. Um, and if we were to push forwards, that elevator goes down. The next control that we'll look at are the ailerons, and these are these control surfaces on the outside of the wing here. And they move when we move the control column left and right. So if we put the control column all the way over to the left, the left aileron goes up, the right aileron goes down, and that will roll the aircraft over to the left. If we then move the control column over to the right, we can see that the right aileron goes up, the left aileron goes down, and this would cause the aeroplane to roll over to the right. Then, kind of finally, I suppose, for the primary flight controls, we've got the rudder. And the rudder here on the back of the aircraft, very similar to um, the rudder control on a boat or a ship. And if we press those pedals, so if I press that pedal to the right, you can see that the rudder goes over to the right-hand side, and that will cause the aircraft to yaw, we call it, to the right. And if we push it over to the left, it goes in the opposite direction, and that will cause us to yaw to the left. So. If we want to roll the aircraft on the roll axis, we'd use the ailerons on the outside of the wings. If we want to pitch the aircraft for up and down effectively, then we use the elevator at the back. And if we want to yaw the aircraft left and right, we use the rudder on the rear of the aircraft. Now, all of these um, controls also have secondary effects. The primary effect of ailerons is roll, elevators is pitch, and rudder is yaw. But if we were to roll the aircraft in any particular direction, the secondary effect of the roll of the aircraft, um, and again, we'll go into the theory behind all of this in a separate series. Um, it's not really important for us to get at this very stage. Um, if we roll the aircraft, the secondary effect is yaw. So the aircraft will start to yaw when we roll it. Um, if we pitch the aircraft up and down, the secondary effect is that the speed will change normally. Um, so we'll have a look at that. And then if we yaw the aircraft, so if we use that rudder on the back of the aircraft to move um, to yaw the aircraft left and right, we'll also get some roll. So primary effect and secondary effects. Like I say, I'll do a ground school lesson on this if people want it um, as part of a separate series. The other um, control that we do have in a kind of um, non-complex fixed wing aircraft like this is the throttle and that changes the speed that the propeller spins around at effectively like say in a in a simple aircraft like this um, so let's get airborne and take a look at what that looks like in flight okay so here we are heading out south down the southern california coast four and a half thousand feet heading south about 90 knots or so nicely trimmed out so i can take my hands off 
the controls and we are pretty much strange straight and level. A little bit of interaction required, but not a huge amount. Now then, so the first one we're going to do is um, look at the elevators and what that control input looks like, what it does for us whilst we're flying. So um, what we're going to look at first though, and this is one of the things that we find people who've done a lot of flying in simulators um, fall foul of, they spend a lot of time looking in at the instruments. What we actually want to be doing is looking outside. So we've set 2000 RPM on the power, which you can see down here, that's our RPM here. So that's 2000 RPM. And now what we want to do is look out of the window. And what we want to find is basically what we call a, a speed, stable and level attitude. So. Um, if we look, for me, the speed stable kind of attitude, that wings level attitude, means that we've got the horizon looking the same all the way across the windscreen. And for me, I use the compass. And I know if I've got the horizon at the bottom of this piece of the compass here, I know I'm going to be about where I need to be um, in terms of staying level, staying at a sa the same kind of height. And this is without me glancing at the instruments, without me looking at the instruments at all. I can pretty much say, you know, right, that's good. And then if I do look at the instruments, yeah, we've lost a little bit of um, a little bit of height there. So I can just add a touch of power and hold that attitude. So that's what we want to look at first. But that isn't what we're concentrated on here. Okay, what we're going to do is look at these effects of control. So. First thing we will look at, so just have a look around to make sure there's no one around. You guys have only got my front screen, I've got the side screens as well, um, so I can physically look rather than having to um, move the aircraft screen around. So what I'm going to do is just move the view down a touch so that you can see the control column and what it does. And we're going to look at the elevators first. So if I pull the elevators, if I pull the control column towards me or the, the yoke towards me, what's going to happen is that attitude is going to change and the nose is going to come up. So if I pull that towards me, there we go, we can see the attitude changing. We start to climb and our altitude increases, but our speed reduces, okay? And if we let it keep going, we'll eventually get to the point where we stall the aircraft. So before that happens, I'm going to release that pressure on the control column and allow it to go back to neutral. The nose is going to drop because we haven't got the airspeed that we had before. Let that speed recover. And I'm going to pull back gently, go back to that original attitude that we had because we know that that worked. Back to that original attitude, put that horizon line in the middle of the compass and we know that that's going to hold us about um, straight and level. Now we're going to look at what happens if we push the control column forwards. So if we push that control column forwards, the nose of the aircraft goes down, that attitude reduces and, and we get the nose down attitude. We start to descend and our airspeed increases and it increases quite quickly. So if we want to recover from that, we relax that pressure on the control column, go back to the point where we've got the horizon in the middle of the compass. And if we give it a few seconds, um, everything will return back to where it was. One thing we're not talking about at the moment is the elevator trim. Okay, um, which we will cover in a separate lesson. Um, I'm deliberately not talking about that here. So let's take a quick look outside. So we're in that level attitude. I'm going to pull back on the control column. The elevator comes up only ever so slightly. It doesn't need a huge amount of change. And the nose comes up. Relax that pressure. And the nose will come back down again because we're slowed down. Let everything recover and we'll go back to that level attitude, which will be about there. Then if we want to push forwards on the control column, that elevator goes down. See, it's only a very small deflection, not a huge amounts of deflection because of the moment, the amount of um, force that we can generate because of the distance it is away from the aircraft. And we dive down and we start to accelerate. So I'll recover by going back to that level attitude and that speed will start to slow down and everything will start to go back to normal. So we get ourselves coming back towards where we were now and we'll look at the next control. There we go. Okay, so next thing we're going to look at is the aileron. So we're going to roll the aircraft left and right. So we're heading south at the moment. We've got the wings level and I'm going to move the control column over to the left. You can see that our left wing goes down 
and we also start to yaw to the left and we would enter a spiral dive to the left if we held this. I'm now going to roll those wings level, so control column over to the right, that rolls the wings level and again back to that um, level attitude, so horizon level, all this looking outside, don't forget, not looking at the instruments, horizon level, horizon halfway through the compass, there or thereabouts, and we will return back to where we were and we turn through about 90 degrees. So I'm going to do it over to the right now, so clear over to the right, control column goes over to the right, we start to roll to the right, we're starting to yaw to the right and that's making the nose drop, um, which again we would correct and we'll look at doing that when we move on throughout the training. I'm going to put left aileron in there, left controls in there to roll us out on south. And again, looking out of the window, not looking at the instruments, get those wings level by using the horizon, put that horizon halfway through the um, compass. And that is us now back to wings level. So that's that what happens if we roll left and right using the ailerons. Again, we'll dive outside quickly to have a quick look at that. Watch the deflection, not a huge amount of deflection here. It's these control surfaces on the outside that we're looking at. So if I roll this to the left, they hardly move at all. And we start that roll to the left. I'm going to roll this back to the right now. You can see tiny little movements actually on the controls. Nothing like those huge movements that we saw on the ground. If I put us back to that wings level attitude, horizon halfway through the compass for me where I'm looking now. And we'll be back to uh, straight and level. And then the final one that we're going to look at is the rudder. So these are the rudder pedals down in the footwell. You can see those moving there. And um, it will be a little bit of a look down from the angle here. Let's just go down a little bit. Probably won't see much in terms of outside here. I'll have to balance it as to what we can see. Let me choose. I'm going to point us towards a, a marker. So I'll point us towards a hill or something like that in the distance. So we've got this little peak in the distance. Let's get ourselves set. There we go. So we've got this little peak in the distance here. That's my new attitude there because I've moved the viewpoint. So we've got this peak in the distance. And what I'm going to do now is gently press the left rudder pedal. So that's this pedal here. So if I press that left rudder pedal, we start to yaw to the left. And we see that peak's disappeared over to the right somewhere. If I let go on that pressure now, we'll stop pretty much where we are. If I want to then move us back again, I want to yaw to the right, I'm going to press this right rudder pedal. And we can see that we yaw to the right and that peak comes back in. A little bit um, choppy when we use the rudder pedals just because it isn't really a primary control that we would use. We use the rudder pedals to keep ourselves in balance rather than to try and actually physically move ourselves around in space. So yeah, looking at this peak again, what I'm going to do then is press, let's get back to uh, the normal viewpoint, which is pretty much there I'd say. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is press that left rudder pedal, watch what happens with regards to the, the reference that's the mouse there. So pressing that left rudder pedal, the aircraft kind of yours to the left. I'm going to relax that pressure and then I'm going to press the right rudder pedal and you can see that we start to yaw over to the right. Great stuff. Okay, so that's the kind of primary controls if you like. Again, I'll show you that from the outside. So here we go, this is the rudder here. Um, this angle is probably the best. We want to go left, press that rudder over to the left and hopefully you can see that that has now moved to the left and we are into the left, back to the centre. And then push it over to the right, we start to yaw over to the right. We're back where we want to be, leave it to be in the centre, and that's the rudder. Okay, the next one then is the throttle, and that's the final one that we're going to look at um, before we call this one a day. So, throttle set at the moment at um, about 2200 RPM, and we're cruising along 110 knots, about 1000 feet, and get ourselves straight and level. Okay, what I'm going to do, without touching anything else, I'm going to pull that throttle all the way back to idle. Um, this is the throttle down here. I'm going to pull the throttle back to idle, and um, you'll see the RPM reduce, you'll see the speed reduce, and watch what happens to the attitude of the aircraft. So, just get ourselves trimmed out, which we have about there. And here comes the throttle back to idle. So that's the throttle to idle. See the RPM reducing. 
the speed starts to reduce. And I'm not touching anything, the aircraft was trimmed. You can see that the nose is starting to pitch down. So we can counter that with a bit of back elevator, a bit of rear elevator to get ourselves back to that attitude. And if I put the throttle back to where it was, about 2,200, then we'll return to straight and level. Next thing I'm gonna do, now that we're at that attitude, is push the throttle all the way forwards. Again, I'm not gonna touch anything. The aircraft is trimmed out, I'm not touching it. I'm gonna push that throttle forwards. We see that the RPM increases. The aircraft starts to climb. And look what happens to the attitude. The attitude comes, uh, we get a nose up attitude. So the aircraft starts to climb on its own. And that's without touching anything. So what do we learn from that? If we add or remove power, we need to make sure that we anticipate if we want to maintain that attitude. So um, what do we mean by that? I'll just show you, so at a thousand feet now, if I want to accelerate, then I'm going to add power and I'm going to anticipate that nose coming up by starting to gently feed in some forward elevator, a little bit of forward elevator to hold that attitude out of the window. And that's what it's all about, okay? Um, if I let go, and I haven't trimmed the aircraft on purpose now, if I let go, because we've increased speed, the nose is going to come up. So it's that forward elevator. Um, push the control column forwards to hold that attitude. Like I say, I will talk about trim in a separate video, so um, we're not going to cover that here. So we've accelerated now. Now we want to bring that throttle back. So I'm going to bring that throttle back. Again, anticipating that the nose is going to drop. So all I'm doing is just bringing that elevator in as the aircraft slows down keep that elevator coming in by looking out of the window and keeping that horizon about halfway through the uh, the compass there, which is where it works for me. Like I say, that might be different for yourself. And as you can see, the speed's reducing because we've pulled that throttle back. And actually we're maintaining pretty much at the moment exactly the same height, purely by looking out of the window, holding or selecting and holding that attitude as it was. So let it drift off a little bit because I was talking, get back to that attitude and you can see we're holding that there. Now as the speed reduces further and further and further, what we're going to find is that I actually have to increase the um, nose up attitude of the aircraft to hold that height. And it's a bit of a feeling thing, I guess, um, as the speed comes back because we're starting to lose lift now. So the aircraft's going to naturally want to descend. And if I keep that going, if I keep pulling that nose up, you can hear the stall warner coming on there and we're now going to deep stall the aircraft, recovering by going to full power, pushing that nose forward. We've got flying speed back, and I'm going to go gently back to that wings level attitude. So that about wraps it up for today. That's the effects of controls. Thank you for joining us. If you've got any questions, please drop them down in the comments below. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. More like this coming all the time. Um, and we're going to build this up, go through the entire private pilot's license, commercial pilot's license, um, and then the ATPL syllabus. There'll be theory coming as well. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. Don't forget to follow us on Twitch as well. Twitch.tv forward slash Mr. MPW, M-I-S-T-E-R-M-P-W. I've been Matt Williams. Fly safe, blue skies.